Keith and Rita are having a conversation about oil sands development. Keith has learned about mining, and his friend Rita has now told him that over half of Alberta's oil sands production is not from mining, but from drilling for deeper deposits called in situ recovery. Rita works for the Alberta Energy Regulator, or the AER. The AER has been regulating in situ oil sands development since it first started and understands its unique impacts and how to manage them. Keith asks how in situ technology works. Rita explains that the in situ process extracts the oil from deep underground deposits. The oil is often separated from the sand underground or in place, which is what in situ means in Latin. And, unlike mining, there are no tailings produced and facilities take up a smaller portion of the land being developed. There are a number of in situ recovery methods being used to produce oil from oil sands. However, most in situ oil sands operations use steam to recover the oil. The most common approach is steam assisted gravity drainage, or SAG D. In a SAG D project, two horizontal wells are drilled. Steam is injected down the top well, which heats the oil underground until it is runny enough to flow more easily. Gravity then pulls the oil and water from the steam to the lower horizontal well, where it is lifted to the surface. Another approach is called Cyclic Steam Stimulation, or CSS. Cyclic Steam Stimulation uses just one well to inject the steam down and then bring the oil and water back up. In all thermal projects, the rock above the reservoir, called cap rock, acts as a barrier to ensure that fluids are contained, operations are safe, and the environment is protected. Rita says that when operators submit an application to the AER, they must prove that they have assessed the geology of the cap rock to ensure it will prevent steam and reservoir fluids from leaving the reservoir. This is called reservoir containment. The idea is that the oil and steam that's being pumped underground must stay there without escaping. This is critical to ensuring safe operations, protecting the environment, and ensuring the oil is not wasted. Operators who seek approval for an in situ project must demonstrate to the AER that the cap rock will hold the oil and steam within the reservoir, and older wells in the area must be examined to make sure they don't end up acting as pathways to the surface. The AER conducts a detailed technical assessment of each project's cap rock and provides specific requirements that operators must follow. The AER will base their decisions on a number of factors, like the technology proposed and geology. If the project is approved, the AER will monitor and work with operators to ensure that injected fluids stay within the reservoir. Rita explains that there are a few other in situ recovery methods, such as cold heavy oil production or chop, cold heavy oil production with sand or chops, water flooding, and polymer flooding. Keith asks if in situ development has tailings. Rita tells him no. The oil is separated from the sand underground, and so tailings are not an issue. Rita explains that in situ development has different impacts than mining, and they have to be managed carefully. One impact is water use. These kinds of in situ oil sands operations use a lot of water to create steam. The AER makes sure that water is used efficiently by requiring operators to recycle as much water as they can. On average, operators recycle up to 90% of the water they use. So that everyone can see how much water in situ operators use, the AER publishes monthly and yearly water use information in the Thermal in Situ Water publication. The information is interactive so that people can analyze it themselves. Keith likes that he can look at information about water use and see for himself how operators are performing. Keith thanks Rita for the oil sands information. 
Rita is happy to share what she knows about oil sands, but that's not the only energy development in Alberta that people are talking about. Hydraulic fracturing, for example, has received a lot of attention around the world and has been regulated responsibly right here in Alberta for decades. For more conversations that matter, including hydraulic fracturing, click on one of the links below or check out the Alberta Energy Regulator at aer.ca.